Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, fountain of living water, source of mercy, tender and mighty, you are clothed with majesty and splendor. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Your love flows through water, satisfying the thirst of all living things, sustaining life in this community, nourishing and delighting us. We bless you for these gifts of water, Salt Creek, the Calumet River, and Lake Michigan. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Your love flows through water, a sign of your saving power. Noah and the animals survive the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea, and they drink from your gushing rock. Naaman washes his leprosy away, and the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Your love flows through the water of baptism, joined to your life-giving word. Your well of mercy and cleansing flood, your sea of deliverance from death into life, your healing river washing sin away, your living water springing up to eternal life. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Shower us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your love. Clothe us and all your people with grace. Embolden us to do justice. Bless us to love mercy. Guide us to walk humbly with you, whom we thank and praise through Jesus Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and you gladly give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us your abundant mercy. Forgive us those things that weigh on our conscience and give us those good things that come only through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. A 
A reading from Genesis. The Lord said, how great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah and how, we, how very grave their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done all together according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him, Suppose forty are found there. He answered, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose 30 are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. He answered, For the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. Word of God, word of life.
reading from Colossians. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive to through the philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him you for in him the fullness of fullness of deity dwelling dwells bodily, and you have have come to faith fullness in him who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with the spiritual circumcision, put off, putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with, with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, flesh God made you alive and together with him, and he forgave us in all our trespasses, erasing the cord that stood against us with all its legal demands. He set aside this aside to nailing to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumph triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in the matters of food and drink or observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on the self-basement self and the worship of angels, dwelling on visions puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking. And do not hold steadfast to the head, for whom the whole body, nourished and held together, is by its ligaments and sewens, grows with a growth that is in Christ. Word of God, word of light. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And Jesus said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? The Gospel of the Lord. Your teacher, Dr. Cheryl Lemons, talks about making the practice room a safe space, a space where you are free to start over, free to try again. And your other teacher, Dr. Bruce Atwell, talks about how in the practice room, if you're only sounding good, then you're not really practicing. Only when you sound bad are you really practicing. As with our music practice rooms, so with the practice room of faith. The practice room of faith is a safe space, a space where you are free to start over, free to try again. And yes, in the practice room of faith, we are free to sound bad as we struggle to find words to articulate our faith. We are free to venture into wrong and challenging thoughts about the mystery of God and God's ways in the world. While you all students at LSM know what it means to have wrong and challenging thoughts, it might mean imagining Dr. Dobler as the devil, Dr. Diablo directing a discordant bell choir, or it might mean imagining Paul Morton speaking the Sunday morning liturgy with all the worship assistants dressed not in white albs, 
but in mismatched Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> I, of course, would still wear an alb, but only one that sparkles with sequins. Now that would get your attention. Well, getting your attention to make talking to God a safe space, this is what the Lord's Prayer is all about. When Martin Luther teaches the Lord's Prayer in the small catechism, he explains that in these first two words, our Father, God is not trying to get us to think good and perfect thoughts. No, with these words, Luther says, God simply wants to attract us. God wants to draw us in. God wants us to know it is safe to talk, safe to cry out, safe to pray and ask for anything no matter how late the hour. What God wants from us in our prayers is not a complicated covenant of conditions, but a relationship. A relationship, Luther goes on to describe, of simple childlike trust. Once safe in the lap of a loving parent or guardian, children boldly and with complete confidence ask God for whatever they need. Here in this very large practice room of faith, I hope it has been a safe space for you to explore new melodies and motifs new harmonies and themes, both in your relationship with your music and in your relationship with God. But I also hope that this month together is not the end of your relationship with God, but a new beginning rooted in childlike trust and persistence that is not afraid to work at the hard passages of faith. Our ancient ancestor Abraham is an exemplar of faith that is not afraid to work on the hard passages. Sensing a God who might too easily destroy a whole city, Abraham delves right into the hard notes playing a difficult passage that still to this day haunts anyone committed to beauty and doing good in the world. Will you indeed, Abraham says in faltering notes, will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Far be it from you, God, to do such a thing. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? Abraham's vision of justice worked out in faltering notes in the practice room of his faith is rooted in a sometimes difficult but always rich and compelling relationship with God a God who sticks with Abraham and who as slowly becomes clear to him will indeed spare a wicked city to protect the few who are weak and innocent. Abraham's faltering and messy working out of faith is what church is all about. As liturgical scholar Gordon Lathrop recently said, churches are not and should not aspire to be perfect societies. What's more, Lathrop continues, we may take comfort, even joy, at this news. The church need not be a place of pretense. It needs to be seen as real. 
made up of real people in a real world. Bodies of flesh and blood, children and adults, youth and the aged and those in between, breathing side by side with their genuine hopes and deep failings. The good news is that here in this practice room of faith, God does not start over with a blank canvas. God takes us as we are and accepts our failings and needs, even if it's midnight and we're hungry, even if we have failed to get any of our notes right, even if we don't know what to ask for. With these words, the words of the Lord's Prayer, God wants to attract us, bring us into relationship, give us a safe space, assure us that practicing our faith with both our good notes and bad ones is where God chooses to meet us. God does not meet us only on the performance stage. God meets us in the practice room of daily life, in every part of our life that struggles to believe, struggles to love, struggles to let go and keep going. The good news is that the practice room of faith is always open where you don't have to wait till tomorrow or the next day, but are free to pray now. Now, to the Holy Spirit, let us pray. We will sing in a moment. Free to pray for anything, from a better world to daily bread, from forgiveness and deliverance from evil to meeting basic needs, from true faith and deep peace to just courage to get up and receive another day as a gift, from majestic sounds of praise to the simple plea of Lord, have mercy. Amen.
With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Rooted and built up in Christ, we pray for the church. Encourage church leaders to take risks for the sake of the gospel and inspire their followers to proclaim your love for the whole world. Lord, in your mercy. Rejoicing in the works of your hands, we pray for creation. May rivers and lakes, oceans and all waterways sparkle with your radiance. Protect our water sources and strengthen those who conserve them. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the peoples of the world, especially the vulnerable. Inspire our leaders with your justice and mercy. Guide the work of legislators and public officials that they advocate for the well-being of those they serve. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Persistent in prayer, we pray for our neighbors in need. To all who have hunger, give daily bread. To all who have bread, give hunger for justice. Open us to the cries of those who suffer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for LSM. Bless the music making and community building that happens here. Call us together in times of both praise and trouble, blessing and sorrow. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for any others in need, including for those facing record high temperatures and wildfires in Europe, for victims of mass violence in this country, for the people of Ukraine and all who suffer innocently, for Phil and Judy, Donald, Mark, Hank, Chester, and any others whose names we speak at this time. Paul, Nancy, Richard, Dennis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Buried with Christ in baptism and raised with him to new life, we give thanks for your saints who rest in your eternal presence. Join our voices with theirs as we sing of your great glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. The peace of Christ be with you always.
Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for our gracious day this day. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the hosts of heaven, the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending maker, redeemer, and healer. In the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church both now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us.
hear our Lord's invitation and trusting in his word of forgiveness are welcome to come forward and receive the sacrament this morning. As you come forward, please come up the right side of the stairs and grab an individual cup, which you will need. And you may kneel at one of three stations, kneel or stand at one of three stations around the altar here. Please feel free to move in and, and take up space uh, as you move around. And uh, we'll come by with the bread first, which is gluten-free. Uh, the wine will come second in a pouring chalice. And please indicate if you would prefer grape juice, as that will be uh, the third uh, person who will come by will have the grape juice. Uh, should you not be able to ascend the steps, you are welcome to come to a station which is just behind uh, the procession cross here on this side. Uh, we will serve communion to you there as well. And please indicate to an usher if you wish to receive communion in your pew. Finally, should you wish to come forward to receive a blessing, uh, please come to the first station uh, in the chancel. All is now ready. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
us pray. O oh God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made, through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. The world is yours, mighty God, and all people live by your faithfulness. Watch over those who are traveling. May they be careful, but not afraid, and safely reach their destinations. Wherever we wander in your spacious world, teach us that we never journey beyond your loving care, revealed in Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. The Holy Three, the Holy One, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen.
in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.